and where it came from. Tell us a bit about your background. Sure. Uh, well, thank you, Dusty. I really appreciate it and having me on today. Uh, <clears throat> I think, obviously, this bill has come from, obviously, a lifetime of, uh, you know, hearing these issues, uh, dealing with them to some extent. Uh, you know, my, like I said, Troy Jackson, I'm the state senator and center president now, but uh, I'm an end day working class person and I uh, worked as a logger uh, most of my life. I uh, worked uh, a couple other jobs for, I'm a member of the Painters Union and Machines Union, so I worked in some other settings also. But, uh, you know, what I saw of uh, workplace uh, violations actually in my industry. Uh, drove me to run for the legislature, and, and so I certainly kept a very uh, keen eye, and, and probably over the years, I served 10 years on the Labor Committee, chaired it for a term. Uh, a lot of people have reached out to me over the years because of uh, my stance on workers' issues. Uh, so this bill uh, brought me uh, you know, I probably didn't quite understand it uh, to start with, but as it was um, explained to me more and more, uh, the, the, the problems became very real to me, uh, even in my own background. Um, the issue is that over time, uh, you know, the Department of Labor and other organizations in state government that are designed to uh, try and help workers uh, have been decimated. Uh, by, uh, you know, real intent to, to lessen the ability for the Department of Labor, uh, you know, to, to look over workers, uh, you know, do work to help workers. Um, and, and, you know, typically the people that will come to state government uh, want to make sure that uh, there isn't as many people doing these jobs. And, and certainly over the previous eight years with Governor Page, uh, there was a, a real, real attempt to uh, lessen the ability of the Department of Labor to work for uh, workers. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even think Governor LePage would argue against that. And, and what that means is that uh, the way that the law is designed is that if a worker feels that they had a violation against them, they have to go to the Department of Labor, uh, you know, for enforcement. And, and if the Department of Labor uh, doesn't want to do it or, or doesn't have the resources to do it, the way the current law it is, um, you really don't have any place else to go at that point. If the Department of Labor doesn't pick it up, the Attorney General's office doesn't pick it up, then, then you're left out. And this, this law is basically to try and uh, give workers the ability to take it a step further. Um, if you go before the Department of Labor, if for whatever reason they choose to not take up um, your case, uh, then you're able to go outside and find a private right of action uh, to, to uh, bring your case, you know, to, to resolution. You may you may not win, uh, but at least you have that opportunity. And I think it's really important that workers have the ability uh, when departments have been stretched thin, uh, when resources have been cut back. Uh, to go forward with their cases. And, and, you know, honestly, since last session, when we had this bill in and we, you know, talked to the Department of Labor, we talked to the Attorney General's office about it, uh, I've actually seen things personally that reinforced uh, exactly what we're saying here is that, you know, there are agencies that just uh, don't have the ability to, um, get too uh, far out, um, you know, to work on issues even geographically that are a long ways away and uh, and just choose to not do it because they don't have the resources. And they'll basically tell you that, that they don't have the resources. That's not an excuse for government to stop working for people, that we don't have the resources to do that. If you've been wrong and, and these things happen, if you've been wronged by an employer, then you should have a right of action. And this bill is going to allow uh, you at least to go uh, forward and find a private right of action to take this issue up. And, and I believe in it wholeheartedly. I've seen it. I've felt it personally. I know people that have. I mean, in this world, you know, uh, we have a lot of times where um, you know, 
people are uh, sexually harassed, uh, made to um, feel like uh, you know they have to do things in their workplace that is absolutely not right, and and they're harder at times to approve. And, and I think the department, you know, maybe feels a lot of empathy towards that, but doesn't take them up. And, and that's not right. People shouldn't be put um, in a box in their workplace because uh, government's not working for them. It, it really upsets me that we have a system where, uh, you know, government's at a place where people feel frustrated and, and they see the law uh, and, and know what it means, but, but then, you know, government doesn't step forward and actually do uh, what those laws say. Uh, so that's why this law is important. Uh, I understand and I want to be clear, Department of Labor, uh, has great people in it, has really good people in it. The Attorney General's office has good people in it, sure. great people. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's not a slap in their face. Right, uh, right. If you have resources, then, then you know, step aside uh, and let, uh, you know, private right of action happen. Right. I, I have no doubt that, you know, under, with leadership that really, believes in and you know their mandate to pursue discrimination that they would be doing this if they had the capacity um but you know when, when you were talking it made me think about the fact that um you know we know that about 60 percent of women in maine report having experienced sexual harassment at some point in their um employed life and uh you know most of those obviously aren't going to um you know, the Human Rights Commission or, or Department of Labor or whatever. Um, but if they do, and then those um, enforcement agencies don't have the capacity to actually address everything that comes to them, um, then we end up, they only are able to take on the cases that are like really egregious. <laughs> and then people know, you know, what ends up happening, I think, is that there's this sort of downward pressure on people who are experiencing discrimination in the workplace where they're not going to report cases if they know it's not going to be taken seriously. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm dealing with this on so many different levels, but, you know, it, it, it's been, it's hard. I mean, I, I certainly felt, obviously, I haven't felt harassment like that in the workplace, but I've certainly felt harassment. I mean, and so I, I, I can only I can only imagine what it's like for women that's feeling sexual harassment. And, and but but what I know is it's happening, and, and they shouldn't have to feel that way. But but what what I believe is the only way that you can help people in this situation is allow them to have the safe space to actually report it and, and get someone that actually investigates it. And, and, and not feel the retaliation, the, the blackballing by an employer that, that you've gone for and nothing has happened and, and then you're really in trouble. That that happens far too often. And, and like you said, I deal with it. I'm dealing with it in a number of different state agencies, maybe in a different realm, but but we can't allow that as government to happen. I mean, when there's a law there that's designed to try and stop this and, and you know, just inadequacy in, in the agency, uh, inattention in the agency or underfunding is not an excuse for government to say, well, I'm sorry, I can't help you, even though you clearly have an issue that should be resolved. That, that, that's, that's, not a, that's not right. That's not the way uh, state government or federal government should operate. And that's really something that bothers me a lot. <laughs> right, right. Um. I'll just uh, jump in here and let folks know a reminder if you're in the room or if you're watching us on the Zoom chat, uh, we're happy to have your questions or comments. So feel free to bring those to us. Um, so, right, we, I think we all agree like discrimination, workplace, um, you know, erosion of workplace rights and protections, these things um, are happening, they shouldn't be happening. Um, and so this bill in short, I'll see if I have this right, um, in the event that people do bring a case to an enforcement agency, if it is not resolved, 
then they can go on to this sort of private um, method to approach it. Is that, is that the way we should understand this? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, the simple fix would be to uh, get enough people in these agencies to do enforcement. I mean, enforcement is key. And, and I know what pushback is by people who will say, well, you know, these are going to be, uh, you know, just frivolous things and all that. I 100% disagree with that. I mean, I see it and, and know it way too well. I mean, this is happening. And, and it's being allowed to happen because of there's not enough enforcement, there's not enough. And, and so what would be simple would be for state agencies to ask uh, for more people to do enforcement, but they're not doing that either. And so if, if you can't do the job, if you're not gonna get the people to do the job, then the next step would be for people to be able to have a private right of action. And that's what this bill does again, doesn't mean if it's a if it's um, if it doesn't raise that level. I believe that most attorneys will advise uh, clients of that uh, to not pursue it. But but certainly, there's attorneys out there that hear these cases and know that that is a very uh, serious issue, but don't have the ability to take them to court because of the way the law is currently. And so. That would allow that to happen in these cases that someone's gone through the state agencies, has been denied or, or left, you know, to their own. Uh, and at this point, uh, uh, you know, someone would be able to advise them that no, you, you do, you have been discriminated against. You know, you you have, and I know you have, and and we can go forward with a court case to try and uh, you know resolve this. Right. <laughs> You know, when you mention frivolous cases, what it, it, makes, me, <laughs> what it makes me think of, I, I worked, um, and some, you know, folks watching may know, I worked for many years in the sexual violence field. And um, I would have to agree with you that the, 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 the amount of frivolous cases are just exceedingly, exceedingly rare in part because the barriers to bringing a case forward and reporting are really high. So when people choose to go forward with something like that, like you just, you don't do that for fun because it isn't fun. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's quite complicated and it turns your life upside down. And so, you know, I just, frivolous cases is like a non-issue to me. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I I agree with you 100%. I don't think that this is something that's at all fun. It's not easy at all. I mean, no one wants to be uh, branded as someone uh, in this, even whenever it happens, uh, because there's definitely, um, I don't know what the word for it is, but, but I, you know, call it blackballing. Um, even, even if you are 100% accurate in your claim, uh, you're still branded as someone uh, that, that won't keep their mouth shut and, and stays in line, uh, which is completely unfair. Uh, you know, everyone deserves to be able to work in a workplace that they feel uh, supported and 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 uh, safe. Uh, and and that's not always the case. And and like I said, I mean, not to turn this, but I all the issues that I've dealt with over the years in the logging industry, uh, not only as a worker, but as an advocate and someone that represents a large number, uh, almost every case that uh, ever was uh, prosecuted, uh, I brought all the way through to the department. It, it was never investigated initially by the department. Uh, and, and what that does to a person like in, in that industry is it completely decimates you from uh, being able to work in that industry. So mm. that's how you're treated when I mean, the, the cases, the cases went through and eventually you know, there was a, a decision made, but I shouldn't have to be, or no one else should have to be the police in that regard. Uh, the, the agency should be in uh, their uh Inability to do that for whatever reason, it, like I said, that shouldn't be used as a crutch, and it shouldn't be used as a way for employers uh, to get out of uh, doing the right thing. Right, and we know, of course, that that individual employee has 
friends and family and community members who observe that and then take their own cues about how they would respond to harassment. So. I mean, that's one of the things that I see in the industry. I mean, every time there's a strike or work stoppage, someone's made an example of so that everyone else knows that you shouldn't do this next time. Right. So we have a question here in the chat about um, what arguments um, opponents would uh, offer to this bill and uh, how we counter that. So, you know, what do you think are the major barriers or arguments against this? And, and what should we know about how we, how we respond? Well, I think, you know, the frivolous aspect is, is definitely the key one that, you know, people will say that, you know, there's just gonna be a rush of uh, lawsuits filed on the private sector against, uh, employers and, and you know we know that that wasn't the case I, I believe it was California that enacted uh, this measure um, and, and that wasn't the case uh, in that state that you know that rose to bunch and there definitely was one because it was the same thing there was you know people that felt that they needed to have this issue uh, dealt with and, and when the law was enacted they went through that system uh, I think at that point, it actually gets employers uh, understanding that uh, it isn't the Wild West. They, you know, they can't get away with it because, uh, you know, government is either overburdened or just not willing to do it. Um, and so I think it tightens things up. But I mean, I, you're definitely going to hear this, that it's going to create a whole rash of uh, workers uh, suing uh, their employer uh, just because they can, which is totally, I mean, as a worker, this is not what you want to be going through with. I mean, what you want to be going through with is going to work and doing your job and going home and not having any issues. But in those unfortunate situations where you do, you should have the ability to, like I said, be uh, safe and, and protected and, and not feel harassed. Right. And I expect, as with so many other um kinds of, you know, new ideas or new programs, there's just an argument against it that making new things is hard and expensive. But, you know, I wonder if, um, you know, the alternative to this, if we all can agree that enforcement is, um, that the state has a vested interest in enforcement, then this is probably uh, both, you know, easier and less expensive than doubling the size of you know, or tripling the size of the Maine Human Rights Commission or, you know, other like improving or expanding other kinds of enforcement methods. Um. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely think that there's that aspect to it. I mean, I, I think the number one thing is that we all have the right uh, to go to work, like I said, and not feel harassed. And, and, and if the government's not going to enforce that, then, then I should have that right to, to uh, take it, you know, myself. I mean, I've watched uh, my entire life, uh, you know, some, I want to be very clear too, that there's a vast amount of, by far the vast amount of people that employ others are, are good employers and are doing the right thing, but, but there's a lot of people out there that, take advantage of the system too. And I certainly face that personally and know a lot of people that, that have also. And, and, and if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna uh, use people in a way that's not correct, then you, you should know that there's an opportunity there for uh, that to turn around and bite it. And, and I don't feel at all apologetic about that. I, I just don't. And, and, you know, I mean, that's basically, uh, every every worker's right, um, and 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 you know we're an at will state. Uh, employers have the right to uh, get rid of you uh, for not doing anything at all wrong. At the same time, when, when you do have when the employer does something wrong, uh, egregious against you, then you should have the right to to, to uh, you know go forth and, and get. Uh, you know, decision made against that. And, and like I said, the other thing that was talked about uh, as far as what we might hear, 
We're taking away the state's ability to do this, like we're taking away their jurisdiction. It's not at all that. You know, I mean, again, if the, I would love for the Department of Labor, for the Attorney General's office to be able to investigate these and take them on as they see fit. I mean, the ones that the ones that they look at and, and think there isn't enough uh, here, a, a private attorney is probably going to feel the same way too. But the ones that just don't get uh, addressed at all, uh, that that's just not right. I mean, they, they should be, uh, you know, looked at. And 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 if 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 there's no way for uh, a worker to do that because the state says they just don't have the resources. Then, then this law is going to take uh, that into account and let you go forward. And I just feel very strongly that that's something that everyone should have the ability to do. So what do we think um, are the next steps for this bill? It hasn't been printed yet, is that right? If folks are listening in, um, we don't have an LD number yet, but any moment now. Yeah, I think if I'm, I, I, I think I signed the jacket okay. uh, on there Tuesday. So it should be coming out of the advisor's office with an LD relatively shortly. But you know, the intention is to have a public hearing and a work session uh, soon on it. And you know, we 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 did. I mean, you know, for anyone, I mean, obviously there's people out there that might not have heard about this, but but for the people that are you know pay attention to state government, I mean, we dealt with this uh, two years ago. We carried it over to try and work on it. We weren't able to finish it because of the pandemic and uh, some of my colleagues refused to come back in. Uh, but uh, but here we are. And so we're gonna deal with it and uh, have, have the debate, have the argument. I, I know uh, it's gonna be contentious, uh, but at the same time, um, I just believe that people should have this ability. So here we go. It feels important for um, at least, you know, for us to be really like raising the profile of this and talking about the need for us to be addressing this issue. So as we- Yeah, well, I think, you know, obviously for, you know, Maine Women's Lobby probably knows this better than anyone. I mean, you know, we obviously know uh, the, the issues that women have in the workplace uh, that are not obviously of any fault of their own. Uh, I certainly have my own, um, you know, know, know how, how this has happened to me and uh, colleagues of mine. Certainly have heard from men and women about the troubles that they've had. Uh, you know, I've been in the main legislature going on 18 years now, and I don't think anyone in the state doesn't know that I'm a labor advocate. Uh, so I hear about these issues a lot, and and they're real and they're happening and they're happening today. And it's time to try and address that in a meaningful way. Well, uh, I couldn't agree more and I thank you for your support on that. Um, you know, women, uh, as you say, uh, women are really affected by these things and often in ways that um, uh, are not always, they're not generally reported on. It does not typically go well for the workers when they do. Um, that is why people don't report. So uh, enforcement is absolutely critical to addressing this. Anything, any last comment you wanna say about what people should know or do about this bill ahead of next week? Well, uh, I mean, it's gonna be contentious. I mean, I, I know, you know, it, 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 you know, the I'm sure the main state chamber uh, is going to be pounding uh, people to uh, call in, testify in opposition, uh, reach out to legislators um, to try and get them to not support it. I, I would, you know, it's hard. I know it's hard for people to testify in public, but it'd be great if people uh, could get in. Um, you know, now you don't even have to come to Augusta, uh, testify, tell your story if you can. I know those are hard too. Uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, I deal with people every day that, you know, tell me about an issue, and, but are afraid to say anything about it. And, and I don't often try and drag it out of them because I know that there's a real, 
a real problems with people that uh, tell the truth about these issues. But if you feel you can, uh, you know, the committee uh, hearing these uh, people in support of this uh, makes a real difference. I mean, anytime you can put a, a name and a face together with an issue, as opposed to a lobbyist coming in, uh, I think that's I think that's really strong. You know, it's powerful. Uh, tired or tough. If you're out there and uh, you're you're listening to this and you have a story where enforcement would have supported you, then we'd love to love to hear from you. We'll drop our citizen advocacy toolkit into the chat, which has lots of information to help folks. Um, engage and we're happy to hear from from people who have this real lived experience. So thank you so much, Senator President Jackson. It was great to talk with you today and we're looking forward to supporting you on this bill. Well, that's great. I was just laughing because like very unscripted but well timed. Right <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, I really appreciate I really appreciate it. Seriously, thank you so much. Uh, All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good. Have a great afternoon. I'm so glad you came. Thank you for what you do. Really appreciate it. Same to you. Bye bye. Take care.